Hello everybody, I am Pal Manikam, one of the second year GI fellows at William Beaumont Hospital, Michigan. I am here to discuss our article entitled Incidence of Esophageal Adenocarcinoma in Barrett's Esophagus with Low Grade Dysplasia, a systematic review and meta-analysis along with the lead author Dr. Tushar Desai. Management of Barrett's Esophagus has evolved from passive surveillance to active attempts to alter the natural history of intestinal metaplasia. Radiofrequency ablation, also called as RFA, is the most widely used technique to try to prevent progression of Barrett's esophagus. The role of RFA in low-grade dysplasia is unclear. Understanding the natural history of low-grade dysplasia would be very helpful to assess the value of RFA in low-grade dysplasia. Therefore, we decided to evaluate the natural history of Barrett's esophagus patients with low-grade dysplasia and conducted a meta-analysis of all studies reporting the natural history of patients in this population. Based on our search strategy, there were 51 studies reporting adenocarcinoma or high-grade dysplasia incidence in low-grade dysplastic patients. Inclusion criteria were patients should have biopsy-proven low-grade dysplasia. Studies should report a minimum of two years of mean follow-up after the diagnosis of low-grade dysplasia. There should be a specified number of patients with low-grade dysplasia who developed either adenocarcinoma or high-grade dysplasia any redundant studies were completely excluded. Using our strict inclusion and exclusion criteria, 24 studies were included in the analysis. On the pooled meta-analysis of all these studies, the incidence rate of esophageal adenocarcinoma was 0.54% per 100% per years of follow-up. When a similar pooled analysis was done, only on the high quality studies, the incidence rate of esophageal adenocarcinoma was 0.67%. Furthermore, to account for the moderate heterogeneity, subgroup analysis were done, including classifying these studies based on a ratio called low grade dysplasia slash Barrett's esophagus. The heterogeneity observed in the studies were largely due to the low-grade dysplasia slash Barrett's esophagus ratio. Dr. Desai, can you comment on the low-grade dysplasia slash Barrett's esophagus ratio concept? So we noted there was moderate heterogeneity in the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma among patients with low-grade dysplasia, especially in the 10 large studies. Now in the 10 large studies, there was also a wide variation in the ratio of low-grade dysplasia patients to the total Barrett's esophagus population. And we thought that this might be a quality indicator of the pathology, um, the pathologist involved in the study. We've, we've assumed that if the low-grade dysplasia patient to total Barrett's esophagus patient population ratio was high, then perhaps low-grade dysplasia was diagnosed very leniently and perhaps was overdiagnosed. In this case, we hypothesized that the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma among these, this low-grade dysplasia population would be low because low-grade dysplasia was perhaps overdiagnosed using very lenient criteria. On the other hand, if the low-grade dysplasia to total Barrett's esophagus population ratio was very low, then we hypothesized that low-grade dysplasia was diagnosed using strict criteria and was diagnosed appropriately. In this situation, where low-grade dysplasia is diagnosed using strict criteria, we did find that we assumed that the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma would be higher uh, than in the, in the case of studies where low-grade dysplasia was diagnosed leniently. And in fact, this is what was found. So we chose a value of 0 0.15 for the low-grade dysplasia to total Barrett's esophagus population ratio, 
We chose that because that was the median value for the 10 large studies. Now, among studies where the ratio was more than 0.15, the incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma was lower, 0.32%, perhaps because, again, low-grade dysplasia was overdiagnosed. On the other hand, if the low-grade dysplasia to Barrett's esophagus ratio was less than 0.15, the observed incidence of esophageal adenocarcinoma was much higher, 0.76%. In addition, there is data showing that patients with Barrett's esophagus are more likely to die of non-esophageal causes like ischemic heart disease rather than esophageal causes. Hence, we also calculated the non-esophageal mortality in the studies reported. The pooled non-esophageal mortality rate was estimated to be 4.7 percentage annually. This is much higher than the incidence rate of esophageal adenocarcinoma per se. Future clinical studies that analyze the cost effectiveness of RFA for low-grade dysplasia should account for the non-esophageal mortality rate in this population as well. We conclude by saying that future studies should focus on the significance of Barrett's segment length in low-grade dysplasia. In particular, we need to compare the natural history of persistent low-grade dysplasia to transient one-time low-grade dysplasia. Finally, within a given institution, perhaps the significance of low-grade dysplasia should be weighted based on the low-grade dysplasia slash Barrett's esophagus ratio. Thank you very much.